Today we're continuing with the theme of accessibility tools within the iPad and in some of the core apps that are built in already. Um, so without further ado, I'll pass you over to our colleagues Karen, Jackie and Kenny, who will be hosting today's session. It has been recorded and if you have any questions, just pop them into the chat facility. Uh, OK, hi everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, my name is Kenny Falconer and uh, my colleagues in here as well. Yeah, and my name is Karen Sharkey and Kenny and I both work at Hollybrook Academy, which is in Govan Hill. Uh, yeah, so um, we uh, today we're going to have a bit more of an in-depth look at some of the accessibility features available in the iPads through the uh, set menu, but also a couple of features uh, you have access to through some of the core apps. Um, so the, the pupils in our school in, um, in Hollybrook Academy um, have a variety of support needs. Uh, many of our children present on the autism spectrum. Uh, some of them are dyslexic and many of them are reading at uh, an early level or below. Um, and one of the things that can affect people with the reading is uh, a visual stress. Uh, so I, I actually get this when I'm reading a white text on a, a black background. I actually find I have to highlight the text so it's a different colour or uh, it seems to jump about in the screen and cause me some discomfort when I'm reading. Uh, when I look away, I'll usually have these distinct like green lines right across my vision. Um, and, and it's perfectly fine if I'm on a computer monitor, this black background, white text is, is very uh, uncomfortable to read. Um, children with dyslexia present with visual stress and children with ASD can be set, uh, sensitive to certain colours densities of light, um, as well as potentially suffering from visual stress. So at this point, uh, I'm hopefully going to share my screen and I'll take you through some of the visual uh, adaptions that can that you can make to your own iPad as well as the pupils iPads. So, so yeah. when Kenny does that, I'll tell you a little bit more about some of the pupils. So as Kenny said, um, we have a number of children who are on the autistic spectrum. We will also have children who come with um, Down syndrome, epilepsy and some of our children have coordination problems or mobility problems and that'll be one of the things that I'll be speaking about today. So I'll pass you back to Kenny. Right okay so hopefully you can see my screen. Um, so if we go into the settings menu and underneath uh, general you'll see accessibility and as we have a look on the right hand side you'll see display and text size so I'm going to tap that and open that up. Now, as I move down a bit, you see that there are two options. There's Smart Invert and there's Classic Invert. Now, what Classic Invert does is it simply changes your display to be a negative image. And uh, despite the fact it changes everything, a couple of our pupils use this all the time. They find it more comfortable to look at. So you simply you tap that and everything immediately swap to its opposite on the color wheel uh, and and uh, black to white etc um, so if I turn that off now smart invert does the same thing but instead of changing everything it is more discerning and it's not perfect but some images will remain as they would normally look whereas everything else has changed so that's that's your smart invert. now the next thing is the colour filters. Now, Apple have set it up so that any display adaptations that you make, for example, with the colour filters, will only display on your own screen. So if you're sharing your screen like I am now, or if you're sharing it on Apple TV, or if you're screen recording it, they will not show. So if I show you just now, um, on my screen, my, my screen has totally changed colour but on yours, it, it should probably have remained the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to use another iPad and I'm going to attempt to show you uh, the, the change uh, live. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, I get up this other iPad and I go to settings and I go to disability. Can you turn your camera yep. back? Oh, there we go. It's much better when it's live. Right, okay. So, here we go. 
so if I go to color filters, which is here. Now, these pencils at the top, they're not for selecting um, the, the colors. They're simply there as a guide to show you how colors are displaying on your screen. So you've got the pencils. You've got this more diagnostic diagram here with the color names and different shades. And then you've got a diagram here with magenta and cyan and yellow. Uh, so if we go here and we turn on the color filters, you can see that immediately it's changed slightly. Now, I've got some here. So there's grayscale, which obviously changes everything to black and white. And then there are three here which are designed specifically for people who have a, a color blindness diagnosis. So we've got a red green filter. We've got a green red filter and then we've got a blue yellow filter. And you can see the subtle changes that they make to the way that these colors are being displayed. But the one at the bottom here is color tint. Now you've got two sliders. So you've got one for intensity. And as I move that, you'll see the intensity change quite dramatically. And that's really just the saturation of the color. And you've got the other one at the bottom, which is the hue. And as you move that, you'll see this changing dramatically. Now, my advice, if you're working with, uh, with a student or you're even trying to find uh, a display setting that, that you find comfortable, is to, um, to find the, the, the hue, the color, that um, is, is most comfortable and then experiment with the intensity so that you can find that happy medium, that, that, uh, that medium that allows uh, the student uh, the, the sort of most usability because you might, you know, they might not even be able to, to make a complaint about how it's looking, but um, they'll be more capable of sitting with the, with the iPad and actually using the features. Um, OK, so the next thing that I uh, want to go on to is, as I mentioned, um, a lot of our children are reading at a really early level um, and big blocks of, of text on a screen are, are really quite daunting in a lot of cases. So um, there is a feature in pages which I'm going to show you now. So I'm going to share my screen again. OK, so if I come out of Teams and I go into pages, I've got here some great opening lines from books and it's a big block of text. And if you present a big block of text to, to anyone, uh, it can be quite daunting. But Pages has this, uh, this feature which allows you to scroll through the text and you can alter the rate at which it comes up. Now, it's really designed so that you can turn your iPad into an auto queue, but I found it's really, really useful for um, allowing children to to uh, read and to scan with text. So the three wee dots at the top right of the screen, and then you go to presenter mode, which is this orange icon about halfway down. So when you do that, you've now got the two um, A's at the top right of the screen. And if you tap on those and you've got auto scroll engaged, you've got a slider underneath, which has got a turtle and a hair. And if you move it down to the bottom towards the turtle and then tap away, it will start, start to scroll. And if you want it to go a wee bit faster, you go up towards the hair and you tap it and you let it go. And it automatically makes the text bigger. It automatically takes away all the other clutter on the screen, all the other distractions on the screen. Um, the fact that you can uh, vary the, the speed that it's scrolling means that you can alter it for different learners. Um, and, and, I, and you can do it halfway through. So if, if they're doing well to start with and then they're starting to struggle, you can change it. It's an absolutely fantastic uh, feature. So I'll come out of that and uh, I will hand you over now to Mrs. Sharkey. 
Yeah, so what I was going to say about um, the presenter mode is Kenny and I have used that quite a lot um, when using green screen. I mean, we've done um, news reports or weather reports. Um, it's been really good and it allows the, the pupils to feel like they are actually a reporter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like somebody from STV or BBC. <laughs> Oh, it's yep. been really people really enjoy it. So, okay, so I'm going to show you um, something called Reader View in Safari. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so I'm going to go to Safari, and I've I've had a wee look at this this morning, and uh, not many good articles are very positive though. So we we'll just have to go. So say you wanted to direct pupils to. Look uh, an article. So when I click this one here, um, it's very busy. You can see obviously we've got the picture, we've got instructions at the top, we've got stuff right, and it's quite a lot. It's quite hard for some pupils or young people to be able to work out what have they to read and to be able to concentrate. So at the top here, next to the web address, there's a two little A's. One, uh, sorry, a little A and a big A. If I click on here and it's show. It says show reader view. So if I click that. You will see that all that all that clutter has been removed, made my page our web page a lot lot easier to read. Also gives you other options. If I click on it again, sorry, just hold it a second. And if you can see though, you can also change the background. So it was on black there. You can put it on cream or grey. You can also change the font. The pupils can find what font they prefer to read. So let's go for Times New Roman and say they'd like it a little bit bigger. Just a little bit bigger. And I've stuck with the, stuck with the grey. And then when I go down, it's a lot easier to read. So for some young people, that would make their life a lot easier. That clutter and those adverts are all gone. And the article that you've wanted them to read is a lot easier and also means that they can adapt it to what size they like and what background they like. So I thought something that might be something that might be useful to some teachers. The next thing I'd like you to show you is in the accessibility. If I go to settings and down the left here we've got general and if we keep going we've got accessibility and I'm going to look at something called assistive touch. So if I go to the touch menu and it's right at the top here, assistive touch. So I'm sure there's many of you who have struggled to take a screenshot using your phone or your iPad. Trying to get that coordination is quite difficult at times. But also for young people that have got coordination problems, that's also very difficult. So if I go to assistive touch, if I turn it on, hopefully you can see there is this little button here that's appeared on my screen. So let's look and see what assistive touch can do. So basically, I can um, I can basically program this little dot to do certain things or to give me certain options that take away from having that having to be able to have this coordination. So you can see here there are four icons. You you can have it for one, and you can do it up to eight. But for now, we are going to do four. And we're going to have a wee look to see what options you can allocate to your touch. So I've got voice volume down and I'll click at the top here and see what there is. I'm just going to go through a few of these that might be helpful. So app switcher, I'll add that. And that will give me, if I click here, see app, app switcher's already went on. If I click app switcher, it shows me what apps I have already open. And I can be able to get to something really quickly. And then if I go to the next one, let's see um, device. And device gives you some options about volume, um, gives you about lock screen and lock rotating. So that's a good one to have. Let's look at see this one here. Uh, one here I, I'm not going to add, but do well is for um, people or young people that use eye movement. Um, devices to con control their iPad. So for some people, that may be something that would be really good for them. And if we go all the way down to the bottom, we have our screenshot, which is how we got here. Okay. So I'm going to add, I'm going to add screenshot, uh, and I, and I'm going to go back to volume. And 
I'm going to change that to grow. And I'm going to show you how that works in a wee second. So if I go back to my web page and if I click on my little dot, there are the options that I've programmed in. And if I click to scroll, and if I've chosen scroll down and see in the middle of my screen, there's a little grey dot. If I click on it, the page goes down. So that's really good. And then I can go back on it, but scroll. And if I think I want to scroll back up, obviously it, it, it gives you the uh, ability to scroll up easily. But let's go back to the settings. So there are some options. As you can see, though, there's lots of other things. So you might go through and think that'd be really good for me. Uh, you know, what rotation would be something that me or my, somebody in my class um, might really like, and that might be helpful for them. So there's lots of options there that you can see. OK. I'm going to go back. So that was customized top level menu, and that is the dot gives you these options. And then within that, we have three um, custom actions, and these are perhaps the three that you use the most often. OK. So if we go to so single tap, so that's when I tap this little dot, dot once, and I've programmed that to open the menu, and the menu is this. Um, double tap, I've programmed for notifications, so when I tap it twice, it shows me my notifications for the day. And for some people, trying to drag from the top screen can be quite difficult. And then long press, I've put in for app switcher. And that was obviously gives you the gave you the options of what apps you have open. Just wanted to quickly show you double tap. You also have a time at the top though, so you don't have to be able to do it, you know, tap really, really quickly. You can extend it and the most is 0.75 seconds. So that's the duration you have to be able to do your two taps. So that's quite good though, because most people or many people will be able to do that in that amount of time. So that's quite good. Something else I'd like to show you is this ideal thing. And this changes basically the visibility of your touch. So if I put it down, you can see my assistive touch button almost disappears. And you can make it a lot, um, a lot brighter, a lot easier to see. So mine was just right in the middle. So I can see it, but it doesn't impact um, like my web page or being able to use my iPad. It's just there in the background. So I hope assistive touch was um, quite helpful. I'd like to show you one other um, part of its accessibility features, and it's down at the bottom here, and it's called Guided Access. So Guided Access uh, allows you, basically it limits the use to a single app in the device. This would probably be the most useful within a one-to-one -one situation that you might be working with your pupils. You might have, though, like I know many teachers have classroom, but that's good for a big group. Guided access so it can basically be put on very quickly to an iPad. So if you're working with a people one to one and you want them to be, uh, be working in one app. So I put it on and it gives me some options. So let's go to uh, let's go to pages. So say I have a pupil and I want them to work in pages and I want, want to work them, want them to work for five minutes on a piece of writing. So I click my home button three times and then it comes up at the top guided access. It also gives you the options to grey out things you don't want them to access. So I greyed out at the top left here documents so they can't get out of this actual uh, page. And in the right hand column, the right hand at the top, I greyed out the options to basically be able to share the document or, be, or to add somebody. The only things they can do is a piece of writing. And then down at the bottom, you have options of what you want them to be able to access. So if I click time limit, you see I want them to work for five minutes. This might be, uh, you might use this the time limit more though, if you're giving them some like free time or some downtime that they might choose like a, kind of a fun app that they'd like them, you'd like them to use, but you don't want them, they can just be, they can take however long. So if I set it for five minutes, after the five minutes, the iPad will just stop working. You can't do anything. Okay, so if I then click start, and then you have to put in your pin code. So do the pin code how you access your iPad. So you can see now. So five minutes. There's not a timer though. 
So it wouldn't be um, if you wanted them to like kind of let them know how long was ca- was going on. You'd have to put it somewhere else, maybe a visual timer, or it might be that it's a game though, and then basically they can just use that, and then eventually the time will go up. You can see that these are greyed out at the top right hand corner, the top left hand corner, so they can only uh, do the piece of grading. So are um, you right? Hello. Bye. Mm-hmm. And that's them and that. So popping, I'll click out of this. And to get out of it, that's the whole point, is you need to be able, you have to put in the passcode. So guided access is ended. And then I now have the ability to get back out of that. And if I click back here, you'll be able to see me again. So I think that's I think those, those are the main features we wanted to share with you this morning. Yeah. And hope so, that you can use them in your settings. So to, to go back uh, just briefly to um, to reader view in uh, Safari, unfortunately it doesn't work on every web page. Uh, a lot of the main web pages have support for this, but if you're if you're you know Googling a, a particular thing and you you end up in a in a slightly smaller um, less adapted website then the reader view function won't be available so it's it's slightly hit and miss in that respect but if you um if you test out a website ahead of time you can know questions or 